This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about the railroad tracks and the trains because we're going to be loading goods into those trains on the east coast and then moving our way all the way over to the west coast, stopping off at different places to deliver goods, to get stock for end game bonuses, and try to get to the yard and retire the train as fast as we can to get the best goods. Today we're taking a look at Whistle Stop. This is a game for two to five players from Bezier Games. It's going to be a Gen Con release. And so let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Whistle Stop, everyone's going to get a board that is a color that matches the color of trains they have. They will get a certain amount of trains depending on the amount of players, anywhere between three and five trains. They'll get some coal, which will allow them to take actions throughout the game. Essentially, these are spent for actions. Or a whistle, we'll get to what those do later. You'll also get three tiles that you'll be able to play throughout the game. You'll be getting more as well. And here you'll be able to hold extra special abilities we'll talk about later. Now you'll be strategically placing your trains at the beginning of the game on the east coast there. There'll be tiles uh, by the East Coast, in the middle, and over on the West Coast at the beginning of the game. And a lot of those are very much randomized. Now, on the East Coast, you're going to be moving to the West Coast throughout the course of the game. On your turn, you can take up to four actions. The most basic action you will take most often is placing a coal here and moving a train. Now, when you move a train, you're going to go forward with coal, and you're going to try to get resources or continue to move depending on what you're trying to do during that game. You're going to be trying to move, let's say you get here, you'll stop at this spot here, and you'll be able to gather that resource. In this case, uh, the silver resource uh, is essentially gravel. So there's gravel, there's lumber, uh, you know, and there's, there was a common goods. There's also uh, rare goods that I'll show you in just a moment. So that was one movement. But let's say I wanted to move again, use my second action to use my second coal. You simply would go like that. That's my second action. I can now place one of the tiles from my hand and I must either move to or through any tile that I place. And because I have a movement, I'll move here. Now, any good, any tile that has a yellow highlight like this or that, those are essentially, uh, that tells you that those are the rare goods. They're the harder ones to get. Uh, you know, red is going to be cattle, green is whiskey, and blue is steel. So I just placed one there, and that was my movement. I'd go here, and I'd be able to take a cattle as a resource. Now I'm done with my coal. I could use a whistle. I'll tell you what this does later. At this point, let's just say I'm done. It'd be the next player's turn. Then you're going to refill your hand to three tiles. And I had uh, two tiles to start the game. I've used one, so I will get one more tile. There's always three face up. I can grab one of these three or one off the top. These do not replace to the end of my turn and then would go to the next player's turn. Now the thing about moving here, when it's other players' turns, they cannot move through you. So if this, if one of these other trains wanted to try to move through me, they can't because I am there. You can move through your own trains, but you can't end there. So essentially this is blocking someone else from getting that resource. So let's say it's the pink player's turn. Now these are all random. And so let's say that they wanted to move to go towards this. They play a tile. Let's say they had another one. Now for one movement, they spent one coal, they're going to be able to move this all the way through to here because there's nothing that they need to stop at. Now these spots here are big hexes. They can hold more than one train of different types, unlike the other spots I just mentioned. And they do different things like, hey, this gets gets that player two more coal. You can keep coal from round to round. So now they have extra actions, but you can never take more than four on a turn. And as you can see, the middle row here is seated with a certain amount of special tiles. Let's talk about what some of those do. And as you can tell, over the game, you're literally creating the board as you play. Now for these special tiles, if you want here, you'd get a gold in the gold mine. Now these gold are all face down in the game, and you'll basically be taking one of them, and they range between three and five points with a pretty evenly distribution. Here is stock. So if you go here, you either have to give in two of the brown and white cubes to get the USA Freight uh, stock. This is yellow banner, yellow stock, USA Freight, USA Freight. You would get this stock. And notice it's number one. The faster you get here, the better. Because when you place in front of you, you have one stock of USA Freight. Uh, this is huge for end game scoring because whoever has the most stock of any type gets 15 points for each stock they have the most of. If it's tied, it's whoever got who has the earlier number. So if I had placed one of these near me and then another player had gotten one of these and we're tied at the end, well, I have it. So if whoever gets the first one, assuming they have this at the end of the game, the next player, if 
that wants to try to beat him would have to get two of them. So that's how stock works. It's great for the end game bonuses. Uh, and there obviously there's one, two, three, four, five different stocks, and there's different tiles for each of those. If you're unable to give those, or you don't want to put those uh, tiles, there, uh, those cubes there, you'll get minus a point. Whistle Factory simply gets you another whistle. We'll talk about what that does in just a moment. Now, the trading post, you can do up to two trades. You can do uh, turn in a common good for either two coal or a whistle or any other common good. You can also give a rare good for either two common goods of your choice or a different rare good. You can do two trades of any type of those. So what do these whistles do? Well, you play them on your action board just as the coal, and you can do a few different things with them. One is you can finally get to move backwards. Normally you can move only forwards, or you can move where as long as you're in the same column of hexes. This isn't considered backwards because you're in the same column of hex. But what if this player wanted to get this, going backwards one uh, column of hexes? When you play a whistle, you can move one or two spots in any direction, and you can skip a spot. So I can go one, two, you do not get that because you went through it, and I whistled to here and I would have gotten a rare good. Normally people block you on these resources space, but with the whistle you can whistle through them. One, two, and then get this resource. So it's a way to get through uh, being blocked. I might want to use the whistle to go two spots to rush to the end to get the bonuses. So I could come here and whistle through and go one, two, and I get here. Once I get here, I need to turn in this red, green, and white. If so, I get 20 points. If I don't, I'd have to take minus five. However, if I'm here, you can actually use the whistle to whistle through this, and you don't have to take the minus if you didn't have that. Now, what's good about getting here early? Well, if you get here early, you're probably going to move your train to one of these yards, probably one of the top, because they're usually better from top down. So I put my train here, I'd get two whistles, and a question mark. Question mark sort of your choice. Uh, it could be any one resource, even the really rare ones, or any token, a coal, a whistle, or a gold, if you remember, between three and five points. So the faster you get here, you're gonna get the resources that you want. Now, in addition to your normal actions, you can purchase up to two upgrades on your turn. These are cool because there's 12 of them in the game, but there's only the amount of upgrades uh, of uh, players plus two. So in a four player game, we have six. And these do different cool things. So you'd pay the amount. So here is two white cubes, so two cotton. If I have this at the end of the game, it's five points. Now I would get this, I'd spend the two cotton and you could buy up to two in your turn and you could put it right here as an upgrade. This allows me on my turn to spend a coal to swap out stock. For example, I could swap a stock that I know I'm not gonna win for another stock as long as that stock uh, you know, tile is on the board. This one, I'll spend any common two common goods and you can spend a, a coal to get any good any resource which is awesome you can spend two white so no player could go to any stop where you have a train because you know these special stops anybody can there can be more than one player there uh, this one you play one coal for two coal this you spend a coal to get a whistle coal to get a gold so it's all different ones and these are important because at the end of the game if you have this you'll get points if somebody else wants this they can take it from you they first have to pay that amount to the resource pile as normal and then give you any rare good so you have to get paid in order to have that stolen from you so that's pretty much it on your turn you're playing up to four actions after everyone has played that round on the left you'll see tokens everyone's going to get two coal there's enough there for two per player so everyone gets two coal at the beginning of the rounds towards the end everyone will get a whistle at the end of the game there is once all the coal is gone the game can also end a little earlier if one player completes and finishes all the trains they have into the yard at the end. At the end, you're gonna score points. You're already getting points throughout the game. Uh, you're gonna get uh, points for some of the gold that you already have. You're gonna get one point for every one of the common goods you have and three points for every of the rare resource uh, ones that you have. You'll also get one point for each two tokens you have. And then you'll do the 15 points, whoever has the most stock in each category. If you're still holding a special tile like this, you actually lose 10 points because they want those to come on the board. Whoever has the most at the end is the winner. All right, well, there's Whistle Stop. Let me first uh, disclose that Bezier Games is currently a sponsor of my channel, and I wanted to disclose that to you because I'm going to be offering an opinion. However, anytime a sponsor comes on board, I do tell them up front that I do truthfully and fairly review games regardless if you're a sponsor or not. So take that with a grain of salt. I just wanted to let you know that that's the case. Now, let me set the table for the biases that I have for these style of games. Now, this is really a pick up and deliver Euro style game. And I gotta say, I'm not usually very fond of this type of mechanism. In fact, I have close to 400 games in my collection and I have only one pickup and deliver game. That's uh, Cinque Terre. It's a, I like it because it's a puzzly style pickup and deliver game and this one is too. So that's sort of my biases on the table. So let's work on my opinion based upon that. Now this game has some 
familiar quote-unquote gateway style mechanisms. If you've ever played a game called Suro, spelled T-S-U-R-O, or Indigo, those are sort of gateway style games that you might find at Target or Barnes & Noble, and they're great for entry-level gamers because it's an interesting tile placement where you're placing a tile and you're moving things around a squiggly line and sometimes you're trying to move your opponent off and in Indigo you're trying to get yourself some gems and such. It uses these familiar type mechanisms to have a bigger, deeper game here. So I like that the mechanisms are familiar and you know, and, and in this game, you are laying tiles. You're moving your 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 train through these different squiggly lines, but you're stopping to pick up goods. And I like how you have multiple trains. Of course, different amount depending on the players. But you can move one train, get some goods, and then deliver it with another train. So you might be at the beginning getting a bunch of different goods, and then having one that's flying to the end to deliver all of those goods. And I like how you have that freedom and flexibility. It really opens up this strategy in the game. I love the stock game battles. You know, you're going off and you're trying to get stock in different uh, uh, companies. And if you're the first one to get it, that's great because that's the tiebreaker. So if somebody else wants to beat you, they're going to have to get two stock, assuming you don't get any more, to get that. And it's interesting because those stocks come out in different spots. They come out during the game. Some of them might be, able to be, be there at the beginning. And then you're going to have to try to find where they come out towards the end of the game or as the game goes on. And you're constantly trying to see what other people are collecting. What should I do? Should I really spend my resources to go get that? Sure, it's probably going to get me like seven points now and a stock is that worth it or should i just go to the end with one of my other trains and get the big end game points maybe 20 or 25 points with those same resources good little uh now versus later decision making i love the upgrades and i love that there's a ton of upgrades and i think there's a like 12 or 16 or something like that and there's uh, a lot of them that you know only a certain amount of them that come out during the game so there's a lot of them that that don't get picked every game so that each game is going to play differently because you're gonna have a different range of upgrades in, in the last game that i played now uh, one of the upgrades i got allowed me to turn a coal into any good and that was awesome because i was able to get to a lot of the rare goods by spending coal and the cool thing is is you do, if somebody else wants it they can pay the amount normally and give you a rare cube so that stops it from like having a turn order thing where someone who's just first can can quickly get the the better upgrades i like that you can take it from other people but it is going to cost you and i like that aspect of the game I like that it has that timing aspect where you're either rushing for the train yard because when you retire a train and you get the end game bonus points, hopefully, uh, you, you get to retire the train and the faster you get there, the better the bonuses are. So you're looking at what's available and you're like, hmm, should I just rush this train to the end? I'm close and I have the goods or should I get this other stock here first right before somebody else is going to get it? And it's a lot of push pull between, hmm, what should I do now versus later? And I really like that aspect of the game. The game is hugely and highly replayable because the start tiles are different in the middle every time. Uh, the tiles that you're going to have are different. The, the, the upgrades are going to be different every game. Uh, and so it's, it's highly replayable. And as the game unforms, you're literally creating the board of the game as it's being played, which is really cool. And every game is going to look completely different, which is going to change your strategy. This game has probably infinite replayability. But it's also very expandable as I look at this with a keen eye that, hey, look, you, I can imagine a lot of different expandabilities going here like with different types of special tiles maybe even different resources different stocks maybe different things happen i think this game lends itself to being able to easily be add new tiles new things new quirks into the game so i think it's going to be able to be expandable if it does sell enough to have that happen i think this is a great next step game i wouldn't say it's a gateway game because it's still got a little bit more going on definitely than say a Suro or an Indigo, but if someone has played that, this is a great next step game. Well, you like this? Well, let me show you something that uses that similar mechanism, but it has a good amount of meat to the bone. So anything I didn't like about the game? Well, just to be clear, I absolutely loved it. It was probably my favorite game that I played it at Origins. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, Akon is, well, it is a next step game and you're trying to get newer people to play it. Uh, it does look a little more complicated than it really is. I mean, when you sit down to play the game and you're looking at all these cubes, you're looking at all these hexes, you're looking at the board, you're trying to explain the game by placing hexes. And when you first sit down, it might be a little overwhelming to a newer player who's just played maybe Soro Indigo. They might be like, oh, are you sure I can do this? This looks really complicated. But after like two turns, it's super simple. It's very quick. You're just playing your coal, your whistles, and you're just going, and it's really cool that way. So it can be a little intimidating for newer players, but this is, I'd call it a light medium to medium weight Euro, probably a light medium. Uh, it takes about an hour to 75 minutes, perfect length for me. Um, so that's one cause. It could look a little more complicated than it really is to newer players. The other one is um, things might get changed before your turn. So you can think of your turn, and by the time it comes around to you, somebody may have gone where you wanted to go, and you're either going to have to figure out what else you want to do or spend a whistle to go through them if what you were trying to do is actually just pass through that spot. 
Uh, so there can be some a little bit there where you're, you, it's your turn and now you have to rethink your turn. But as you get to know the game, you see where you want to go, you see where other trains are. And it, for me, it wasn't a big deal, but for people that don't like to have their plans messed up or they don't like to have to think, uh, you know, if they think before their turn, they feel like, well, I had to think right when my turn became because the person in front of me just did what I wanted to do. The thing is you have many trains in this game. Uh, and so you have many alternate paths and you should be able to think of those before your turn, but it's just something to be, uh, you know, to, to know about. But overall, I absolutely love this game uh, and I'm, I'm keeping it in my gaming library. So let's in induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.